Have you ever wondered why sometimes, no matter how hard we try, our relationships seem to hit a wall? Like you're speaking different languages, even though you are having the same conversation. It's not just the usual misunderstandings. There's something deeper happening, and it's our brain playing tricks on us. Yep, I'm talking about cognitive biases. These little mental shortcuts that we rely on every day without realizing it. They can actually mess with how we see each other, and how we relate to the people we care about. They shape our thinking in ways that can destroy communication, trust, and connection. But the good news, once we understand these biases, we can start avoiding their traps. Let me give you an example. Have you ever had an argument with someone, and afterward, no matter what they said, you were convinced they were in the wrong? You might be dealing with the confirmation bias. It's when we search for evidence that supports what we already believe. And ignore anything that contradicts it. It's like wearing glasses that only show you one side of the story. Imagine it like this: you're standing in front of a jigsaw puzzle, but you are only looking at half the pieces. You think you've got the full picture, but there's a whole other side you're missing. In relationships, this bias can be toxic. If you are convinced that your partner, friend, or family member Is always at fault. Your brain will zero in on every tiny thing they do wrong, while ignoring the good they bring to the table. Let's say you are in an argument with your partner about house chores. You think they never help out. Confirmation bias will lead you to notice every dish they leave unwashed, but when they do vacuum or take out the trash, your brain just kind of skips over it. The relationship suffers because you're not seeing the full picture. So how do we get around this? The key is to pause and ask yourself: Am I only looking for what supports my belief? Try to gather evidence for the opposite. What's the other side of the story? The simple shift can make a huge difference in how you approach conflicts, helping you see things more clearly. And that's not the only bias that sneaks into our relationships. Another one. The halo effect. Ever met someone who made a great first impression, and after that, you saw everything they did as perfect? That's the halo effect at work. It's when we let one positive trait or moment color our entire view of a person. We see them through this shiny golden halo, and it blinds us to their flaws. It's kind of like falling in love with a beautiful wrapped gift, only to find out later. That what's inside isn't what you expected. In relationships, they can lead us to overlook red flags early on. Maybe you're dating someone and they are charming, kind, and thoughtful on the surface, but over time, you start noticing signs that they're not as emotionally available as you need them to be. The halo effect can keep you from seeing those things until it's too late. The fix: be mindful of first impressions. Yes, they are important, but don't let them dictate everything. Over time, people reveal who they truly are. So keep your eyes open and take a step back to see the whole picture. Now, I want to talk about a bias that's a little harder to spot, but does serious damage. The fundamental attribute error. Let's break that down. Have you ever had someone cut you off a traffic, and your first thought was, "What a jerk"? That's the fundamental attribution error. It's why we assume someone's actions reflect their character, not the situation. We blame the person, not the circumstances. But here's the catch: when we do something wrong, we usually excuse ourselves because of the situation, right? If we are late to an appointment, it's because traffic was bad, or we had a tough morning. But if someone else is late, we might think they're just irresponsible. Now. Apply this to relationships. Let's say your friend snaps at you during a conversation. Your immediate reaction might be to think they're being rude, or they don't care about me. But what if they're just having a bad day? Maybe they are stressed at work or dealing with something personal. The fundamental attribution error makes us jump to conclusions about people's character rather than considering the context. 
One way to combat this is to practice empathy. Ask yourself, is there another reason why they might be acting this way? Give the benefit of the doubt, because often the issue isn't who they are, but what they're going through. There's another bias we fall into, especially in long-term relationships, and it's called the status quo bias. This one's sneaky. It's our brain's preference for keeping things the way they are, even if they're not working. It's like staying on a treadmill that's stuck at the same speed, even though you know you could hop off and try something better. In relationships, the status quo bias keeps us in unhealthy patterns. Maybe you've been having the same argument over and over again with some, but you don't address it because it feels easier to just stick to what's familiar, even though it's not helping either of you. Here's where I think it gets interesting. Breaking the status quo requires us to be uncomfortable for a little while. It's like trying to get off that treadmill. You know it'll take effort to step off, but once you do, you're free to move in any direction. In relationships, this means being open to change, having those tough conversations, and trying new approaches, even if it feels unfamiliar at first. And finally, let's talk about projection bias. This is when we assume that others think and feel the same way we do. We expect them to react to situations exactly how we would, and when they don't, we feel misunderstood or even frustrated. Imagine going to a restaurant with a friend and ordering your favorite dish. You love it, so you assume they'll love it too. But when they don't enjoy it as much, you're confused. How can you not like this? The same thing happens in relationships. Maybe you express love through words, but your partner shows it through actions. If you're not aware of projection bias, you might feel like they're not as invested because they're not expressing it your way. The way to avoid this? Communication. Ask questions and really listen to how the other person feels, instead of assuming they feel the same as you. It's like learning a new language. You have to understand their vocabulary of emotions and experiences, not just rely on your own. Cognitive biases can seriously sabotage our relationships without us even realizing it. They distort how we see and understand the people we care about. But here's the bright side. By being aware of these biases, we can start to catch ourselves in the act, take a step back, and see things more clearly. Think of it like this. You're the captain of a ship, navigating through tricky water. The biases are like waves pushing you off course. But once you know they are there, you can adjust your sails and steer back in the right direction. We can't completely get rid of these biases. They're part of how our brains work. But we can learn to manage them, to recognize when they are leading us astray, and to bring a little more awareness into our interactions. At the end of the day, our relationships are worth it. And the more we understand how our brains work, the better we can connect with the people who matter most. Here's another video you may be interested in. See you around at IntelliWorks.